In this movie we'll show you how we can machine uh, an STL file. Uh, now the important thing to remember about STL files is that they are built from a series of triangles so you can't access any of the individual faces or edges within the um, uh, file so you have to take it as a whole. So uh, having read this uh, file in we'll just check and draw a tool on it so we can check on the sizes. So that's a 6mm tool, so obviously that's a very small uh, STL file which we'll need to scale up. So to do that we go into Geometry, Scale, select the part we want to scale, and we'll scale that up. Uh, so we can also set the datum on that, and let's set the origin to be the centre point so that the z-axis is at the top and the xy is in the centre of that shape. Uh, so to machine that we need to create a boundary piece of geometry uh, that will act as the pocket and we need to create a surface of that which will limit the machining. So if I go into the xy plane and then I just draw a rectangle around the outside of there that represents the boundary. If I want to I can change the sizes and put in the exact sizes of the rectangle if I know the sizes. But for this example we'll just use the uh, screen coordinates. Uh, so to create a surface we go into milling surface and we just choose the surface. The tolerance factor here will determine the uh, accuracy so if you're on a very accurate machining path then set a smaller tolerance but for most cases 0.1 of a millimetre is uh, is adequate <clears throat> so we've got the surface defined and we've got the uh, boundary defined so we can now do a pocketing operation so we choose pocket uh, we can set the step over and then we can choose either zigzag machining or contour style depending on uh, our preference uh, the tool we're going to use let's choose a small six mil tool the surface that we created is that one and then we can set up the clearance plane, the feed change plane and the depths etc. Uh, so in its simplest form we uh, do that and then you can see how that has draped the toolpath over uh, the model. If we want to go back and modify any of those things we can change the depth we can change the step over and if we want to we can use a step down to machine in a number of Z passes. So each time that we uh, modify the geometry uh, the pocket is recalculated. So if we go into there again and maybe change the step over to 0.5 we can see that it's recalculating the pocket. So depending on the uh, complexity of the model and depending on the uh, speed of your computer that will take as long or as short a time as it needs to. Um, having created the tool path we could then produce a uh, roughing and finishing path by using the material allowance feature here so we can leave the material allowance on for roughing and then take that off using uh, another pocketing operation. Uh, when we've uh, uh, completed the machining we post process and that will produce the g-code file which we can then send down to the machine tool. If we want to as well we can simulate the program using the machine tool simulator So these are all the defaults for the um, simulator which we can leave as they are. Go straight into simulate. <coughs> so that's showing us the full machine tool. If we want to we can focus just on the workpiece and then use the video controls at the top here to uh, machine that part.
so we can uh, show the stock material and uh, if we want to we could focus on the complete machine tool reset the graphics and then run that through again and it's simulating the complete machine tool path As you can see, that's a fairly small component, but the same thing applies to uh, any size of part. So we close the simulator and then back into the machining. So if we need to add further instructions onto that, then we can do. Uh, but that's basically how we can import and machine an STL file.